Ooh. Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for checking my channel. My name's Josh, I'm the owner and founder of The Bio Dude, and today, finally, I have this massive habitat right here that we have been custom building for the last couple months. Now, this is a custom built cages habitat. Love the guys at cages, they do such good work. You can see we have a very special custom universal rock background. If you guys don't know universal rock, check them out. They're a couple hours north of us here from Houston and they make some awesome products. If universal rock backgrounds is something you guys are interested in, in us carrying at the Bio Dude, drop a line. But I really gotta thank the guys at universal rock. They did such a good job custom tiering this background for us for this habitat. How we attached it is we essentially drilled it directly into the PVC with silicone as well. And then we ended up patching it with some of the paint that they sent in some of the areas. Uh, and that really, as I like to say, tied the room together. Um, as far as heating and stuff is concerned for my emerald tree skinks, uh, we are combining both of my breeding groups together into one mega group, and they are going to thrive in this habitat. Uh, so for starters inside, I have two bulbs in here. Both of them are 50 watt halogen bulbs. Uh, I'm expecting to have a really nice hot spot of around 95 degrees right under here. We have an Arcadia 6% UVB bulb and a BioDude uh, Solar Grow in here. You can see that not only the UVB and Solar Grow, but the heat bulbs are 100% protected by these uh, cages here. And then at the very top, we are running two computer fans. Uh, these, uh, this is something that I've actually been working on. If you guys would like BioDude to, spell, to sell specialty niche fans that are especially meant for terrariums that can handle getting wet, that, can you, that you can adjust, drop me a line in the comments. We have one fan as an intake and one fan as an outtake. This is gonna make sure that we're gonna have those, hu those humidity ranges that the emeralds really, really like. And I really just can't. Let's go, let's get building. The first thing we gotta do, let me show you what the cages look like now. So we had one cage in the break room and we had another cage here out on display. Now the cage in the break room, uh, that group was originally like my, my most exciting group uh, and they are being really prolific for me. This bioactive substrate is very old. I honestly don't even know how old this substrate is, but I'm gonna be using it to jumpstart the additional substrate that I'm going to be putting in. So the first thing that I got to do is I got to get my babies out of this cage. So I'm going to have to be exceedingly careful because I know for a fact that there are babies, not just babies, but eggs in here. So that's something that as I remove the substrate, as I go digging, that I'm going to have to be extremely cognizant of. So you can see one of my, one of my girls up here. Come here, baby. Come on. And I'm really looking forward to getting some of these plants out because some of these plants are just straight overgrown from this habitat. Look at all the isopods on here. This is a large monkey pod and you can see a whole bunch of dwarf whites and springtails just eating the crap out of this thing. Oh, there's so many. This, I love this build. I feel like I'm destroying a unicorn, but it's okay. We'll get it done. And I have everything in here. Uh, really set in place to prevent things from moving and falling. So there's also that as well that I have to watch out for. So babies love getting in crevices like this. So this is, guys, this is a great example of long-term bioactive habitat maintenance. You can clearly see the substrate is thriving, but if you look at the wood, you can see some like urates. This is like all the areas that like we weren't able to reach with a toothbrush or um, areas that the bugs weren't able to reach. And it just gives you a good inclination of what some of your long-term maintenance can look like for your habitat. This, look at the Shefalera right here. This, is an, this thing is an absolute monster. Look at this. It is going to look really good in this habitat. All right, so here we go. All right, so we actually have some pretty large roaches in here. Awesome, but I don't see any emerald tree skinks in that cord tube. And you can see my adults, they're not happy right now with what I'm doing. Come here, baby. Oh. 
Yeah, we got darkling beetles, we got earwigs. We got a whole bunch of awesome critters living in here. They have all congregated to this cork bark piece. Come here. There's number one. Hey, hey, it's all right, it's all right. Shh. He's like, I wiggle my butt. Hey, baby, come here. Oh, wow. Look at this, guys. Just look at this. I guess you can say it's been long overdue to get these guys out of here. And I am just ecstatic that I get to do that today. All right. So first, we're starting with wood. All right. So just moving this around, I see earwigs. Like, just look how alive the soil is. Just moving it a little bit. I see some crickets. I, the, as far as springtail and isopod density, I know there's a ton of dwarf species in here. There are probably some larger dairy cows or something of the like here. There's a dubia roach in here. Man, this is great. There's a whole bunch of different food options in here, different opportunities. All right. Okay, so let's work on getting the plants out. Look at this root system. And look how nice and fluffy this substrate is. Like guys, look at this. This is the very bottom of the substrate. See, and look, here's an egg. Here's an egg from a little baby that hatched not that long ago. Right underneath the root system, but you can like, this substrate is perfect. It's not oversaturated. It's light, airy, and fluffy. Ah, oh, that's great to see. That really is good to see. And I'm really trying to be as careful as I can but as you can see, we have grown deep into this drainage layer here. So I'm just really trying not to deal damage to the plant. Here's another hatched egg. So that's two, just in this habitat alone. And again, I am trying to be as careful as possible to ensure that I don't damage this beautiful plant because its root system is very extensive in here. If you guys remember the video of planting trees and shrubs in a terrarium and why you need deep substrate, let this be the empirical evidence that you need of why, like look at this root system, guys. Wow. Now we move on to cage number two. So step at a time. Guys, this is my oldest group in here. Uh, I'm really fond of this habitat. As you can see, this was the one in the break room and we had this in the break room just because these guys, A, they're one of my most prolific breeders here, but number two, they are just super, super personable. So what I'm gonna start doing is start pulling some of the hardscape out and doing an examination of the substrate just like we did in cage number one. Now I may use these plants again, I'm not sure, but I know I got some really beautiful ones set aside to be able to facilitate the new growth of the bigger ones I want to put in here. Check out this nut pod. It's just been eaten from the inside. This was a bell pod. Just like the other cage, this Chefalera is just an absolute monster. So first things first is I got to get out, which is this big piece of cork right here. Oh, 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 okay. I'm sorry. Come here. Come here. I know it's been a while. Okay, we got the other one. And then we got this bad boy right here. Ugh. And I just saw an egg. Now, this substrate is, is, this substrate looks good, but not near as good as the other habitat. I'm gonna show you guys why. So for one thing, you notice when I went down, you see these clumps? This isn't something that you want a lot of. Your substrate should always be nice and you know, nice and loose like this. So I'm gonna pull from the very bottom here. Look at that. This is from the very bottom of the habitat. You see how nice and loose and airy, but with nice microbial pockets, like this is a piece of wood that's just enveloped and soaked. Okay, and you can see a whole bunch of isopods in here. There goes a couple. So just one dig and I pull up a whole thing of isopods on the very, very bottom layer. And then, but then we go over here 
And I do see some life in here. It just doesn't look as good. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom, to the drainage layer. Now just look at the color of the substrate. It looks completely different. Now what this tells me is that at some point in time, this substrate got not waterclogged, but almost. Like I see a whole bunch of dwarf white isopods in here. There's one there. There's some here, there's some here. So like there are isopods in here and it looks good, but it's just uh, the consistency, it's a little bit dense. So we always wanna try to have from point A to point B, that nice dry layer on the top, and then that nice evenly fluffy moist layer in the middle and the bottom. So the front is a little bit better. Like you can see, this looks a lot better. This substrate is good to use and I'll be able to use it to jumpstart our bioactive habitat. Oh look, there, there goes some oranges. So we got oranges in here, we got earwigs in here, we got dwarf whites in here. So like our cleanup crew is thriving. You can see this is why we like to mix in the cork bark or other things like this because this is just filled to the brim with isopods. You break it up, I guarantee there's gonna be isopods inside here. Oh, look at, look at that. Pretty cool. Okay guys, so with this habitat, I am gonna be using a drainage layer. This is my 18 inch super grow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna cut it here the size and it should fit fairly flush in here. Now it doesn't need to be perfect. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Look at that. That's gonna be a it's a really solid drainage layer right there. Now I don't ever expect water to pool under here, but I do need to make sure that the roots do have another open airage spacing to be able to reach. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my firma. This is the new firma. So this is number one. That is approximately 30, this is 36 quarts right here. Perfect, okay. And then, I'm gonna start taking my existing substrate from their habitat here. I'm gonna just dump it in. And then I'm gonna get it going. You can see the difference between broken down matter versus new matter very clearly between the two. I wanna mix this up and I'm kinda, of, I wanna see where we're at here. So as of right now, I got a good seven inches of, of substrate layer in here. I am gonna get a little bit more. I'm gonna, I would like it to be right around that eight inch mark. I think that'll be optimum for the type of plants that we're using, things like that. Oh, okay, here's two eggs that hatched right there. Oh, wow, okay, so this one hatched already. Okay, but here's a good one right here. This one was, these were just laid. We're finding dozens and dozens of eggs. I'm amazed how well this notes more eggs. I'm amazed how well this substrate well, has done. It's so amazing to see. And it, honestly, I mean, the eggs are pretty good evidence too, right? All right, I am gonna be happy with that amount of substrate that we're gonna be putting in there. The next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be adding some soil additives. I'm gonna be adding leaf litter, uh, some soil cow plus, some southern palm leaves and the bio vibe. So I'm gonna take the soil cow plus, and this is mainly for the earwigs and the isopods and the trees that we're putting in here. And then the bio vibe. So I'm choosing to use the bio vibe. The, all the processes that we need, they are already established in most of this dirt. But if you remember, we put two from a 36 quart bags in here that were unsynced, fresh out of the bag. So we need something just to help move things along as well as to help uh, prevent shock for our plants. Regardless of what we, what we do, the plants are gonna be upset. Um, and it's up to us to make sure that we keep them healthy uh, and lively while we go through this process. So what these are gonna do is these are gonna be really absorptive and they're really gonna do a great job at ensuring that the soil aerates, especially as it gets established here in this bioactive habitat. This is live oak and water oak mixed together. All right, now I'm really happy with the amount of biodegradables are in here. I'm happy with, uh, with what we have as far as depth. You can see how far down it goes. Yeah, look at that, that's great. Exactly what, that's exactly what I want. 
Now it is time to start escaping this beast. I'm ready. So let me show you some of the stuff I got over here. I got some beautiful, beautiful pieces. I have uh, this really nice mangrove root that I've been potentially wanting to use. Two really, really nice show grade cork bark tubes. I do have some of the hanging abutilon as well as some of the moss and jungle vines that I may use. We'll see where the build takes me as far as if I want to use it. And then we have a whole bunch of plants here. So I got a big fiddle leaf fig, but before I get my hardscape in, I want to get some of my largest plants established where I want them to be. And that of course is going to be my fiddle leaf fig for starters. So it's very, it's great that we're using such deep substrate because as you can see, this is a pretty big plant, but you know, its root system is going to be extremely extensive. Uh, and this is going to be one of my nice ground covers here that you're going to see. So tentatively, that's where that's going to be. That is root system. And then let me do a tentative for this big Neantha, Bella Palm. I'm going to play with this really quick. That's definitely doable. Okay. So mega cork tube number one. Look this bad boy right here. I just see tons of op opportunities here. So this piece I'm gonna actually put here in the back with the mouth on the top like so. Yeah, okay, look at that. Okay, anchor point number one. And again, it's right next to the, it's right next to the tree. And then I got this bad boy right here. So, and then this, okay. All right, I dig it. Here, I have a really, really nice piece of Amazon driftwood. I absolutely love this stuff. I love how it looks. I love the texture and heaviness of it. There we, there it is. Look at that. Nice little anchor point right there. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so you can see here, out of control, absolutely out of control. And I know exactly where I want this to be. So I'm this, this thing's root system here, we're gonna see how it does here over time. But I'm really confident that I can keep this happy and healthy down here, as long as we keep it watered appropriately. Now again, I'm really expecting the BioVive to pay big dividends here on these plants to make sure that they don't go through excessive amount of shock prior to being introduced into this habitat. Yeah, I think that'll be really nice right there. But I want, I need something big coming up the middle that goes in through the back for that horizontal piece. And I think I got that piece right here. They absolutely love this cork branch. And don't worry, I'll make sure this is nice and anchored and that's not gonna be going anywhere. Or instead of the cork branch, if I should do, if I should do, oh yeah, that's in there. I ain't going anywhere. Now it's getting some of these remainder pieces in here. So essentially with this living vivarium, what I'm trying to replicate here is an under canopy that goes into an open portion of the jungle, very much like where they're from. So they spend a lot of their times in, in the under canopy of the trees, going down towards the forest floor, hunting, laying their eggs in their little social groups because they're an extremely dynamic skink. Uh, so essentially what I'm really attempting to do is make a nice crowded space that facilitates what I'm talking about here. Yeah, okay. So for me, there's just one big thing missing and that is something here in the bottom middle. Um, and then maybe we ought to get a couple epiphytes up here, uh, like some bromeliads for some opportunity zones. But I do think, I do think this here in the dead center is the game winner, 100% because this is much like a branch in itself. And with how deep this is, this thing needs, I mean, these root systems are no joke. So I got to carve out a lot of space just to fit these root systems and make sure I'm not damaging them, making sure I'm covering them up appropriately. 
Got some, got some Sanservias. And then I got this beautiful, look at this. Okay. Now this is a, a partially shade type of plant right here. It likes some light, but nothing too crazy. So I think right down here is a perfect spot for it. The Sanservias, I may have to see how they do, but I think they'll be okay. This leaves plenty of space for the water bowls as well as everything else. And then I got this beast right here. And I just wanna check one thing and I wanna see if I can do it because I'm pretty sure I can. And I can and I am. So now this Shuffalera is really designed to grow up just like this, just like the Neantha is. You know what? I'm gonna try to put a net pot. I'm gonna get a net pot with some spag moss and I'm gonna put that right in that little lip. So that's, what, that's where this is gonna go in a nice net pot that's gonna be wrapped in sphagnum. Right like that. And then eventually we can string this to cover the top layer and then that's gonna leave all this up here. Should have a really good, a really good Ferguson zone rating here and it's nice and dense. There is branches everywhere. There are tunnels and hides everywhere. Uh, now it's just doing some of the final touches here. So for number one, this is a primate skull. We're just gonna put that skull right here in the middle. Uh, I just got, I got this piece of dragonstone that I'm actually gonna put back here. This is just a secondary base that's gonna be going directly up against here. All right, so we are gonna be adding in a little bit more cleanup crew. Some here, some here, and some there. Be free. Okay, and same thing with the springtails. Got a whole bunch of them in here. Got pinks, somnias, the whole mix. And I'm putting them right near the water bowl too. Boom. Boom, I like that. Okay, I think that looks good. Let me get some epiphytes. Got this old school brom right here that we actually had in a build. And I'm actually gonna get this established right in here, like so. I love that placement. And then right here around this base right here, it's gonna put some spag and I'm gonna tuck it in here. So when the Mist King mists twice a day, coming out right here, we're only starting with two nozzles. We'll see how it does with the, with the fan. I expect this to, to thrive and get covered top to bottom here, okay? And we got a couple more offsets and some other ones here. So, there we go. Get that bad boy right tucked right there like that. I'm not a fan of that right there. I do like this though. Oh. Nice little, con a nice little family of Brahms, leaving this end more open and sparse for them. And this end a little bit more flexed out. And then, and then I got a little bit of spag that I'm gonna just kind of put around here. Wow, I actually really do like that. I think that looks wonderful. All right, guys, next I'm gonna give this a really, really solid misting. And I'm also gonna water all the plants, mainly the trees, to help prevent that shock that we were talking about. All right, guys, so we just did the finishing touches. Let me show you. So I absolutely love this habitat. The strong, the strong fan that is pushing out is going to work wonders with these bromeliads closer to the heat bulb with the outtake right here, starting with the dual mist king. I love how it thins out at the top. I tried to make it resemble their natural habitat as closely as I could. So again, like I said, when you get to the very bottom, there's a lot more branching. There are, there's a lot more denser branching. There's rocks there's a lot more thicker, denser foliage. And as you work your way up, it slowly supersedes into a more open aspect space where uh, as, as, as if it would be in the wild, the closer up towards the sun that they're getting, uh, the more open it becomes. And of course, towards the very top, I provided lots of opportunity zones in the form of bromeliads, as well as tons of places for them to hide and get water. We have two water bowls in here and nut pods scattered everywhere. 
And honestly, I, I love how this looks. I love how we planned this for months and months and months. And ironically, this habitat wasn't even for them. I was actually gonna put Smithers in here. Uh, but then we got a female and now she's getting a cage even bigger than this one. Let's get them in here, cause I'm excited. My group, the groups that I'm combining, this is the group that we're doing. Unfortunately, my lighter co colored female, we did lose her. Um, I'm pretty distraught about it, but you know, that happens. She was wild caught and she was older. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you, come on. Okay, here, all right. Go on in, there you go. Hey baby, you're my calm, you're, you're my calm girl. Yeah, you, you remember me. You guys can tell, if you guys remember my other videos, I don't get to play with my skinks near as often as I, as I got to in the past just because of how my job is now. Just lots and lots of big picture. All right guys, so I really hope you enjoy this journey with me because I loved it. And let me tell you, I needed this so bad because I don't get to do fun stuff like this very much anymore. And honestly, it's deserved. These guys have been in 236, 1836s, and to me, it was too small. And I now finally feel that they have the space that they deserve. And I really hope you guys come here to the BioDude Houston and just take a moment and really appreciate these guys for how amazing they are. And I really want to thank Universal Rock for supplying this amazing background. And I'm going to tell you, there will be more backgrounds using their products. Thanks again, Universal Rock. The Emerald Tree Skinks really appreciate it too. Again, my name is Josh. I'm the owner and founder of The BioDude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. You can come check me out here at The BioDude Houston. Please like, hit that like and subscribe button. Follow me on all of our socials. I really appreciate everybody's support, and I really hope you enjoyed this build with me. The dude abides.